hey, as the song says, is there anybody out there? As you may or may not know, uh, Kim and I tried to do a meta metaphysical matters earlier, and I don't. I listened to part of it, and what that sound was, I have no idea. So I just had to delete the whole thing, and I'd repeat the things I said for you, but unfortunately, I have no idea what I said. <laughs> so, so anyway, I don't remember what we even talked about because I stayed in a, such a state of agitation at trying to make things work. Um, I'm glad to see y'all. Some of you coming back in. Um, I won't keep you very long, but you know, if y'all got anything you want to ask me, um, or would like for me to talk about. Now, I would like to talk about Blanca. She was saying that she was feeling something pulling her foot. And as you know, that is not uncommon for, uh, things like that to happen in, uh, your house. Because she has a lot of paranormal activity going on in her house. And so it doesn't surprise me at all that she had some stuff happening there um, with a spirit. And as some of you may know, that's not an uncommon thing for some people to experience is having their feet pulled. Of course, when that happens to me, it's, I don't know if I'll survive that. It's something I've not had happen and I hope I never do. But as she had said earlier, she had been asleep and she felt somebody pulling her foot, thought it was her kid, and then her, you know, telling her kid to qu quit it and her husband informs her there ain't nobody in there. But, uh, so yeah, we can have those kind of things happen uh, where we actually can uh, have these beings. Um, no, we can have these things happen. Uh, some people, like Blanca, has a very um, high vibration, you might say, very psychic person, very emotional person, which psychics are usually very emotional, very sensitive. And I think those kind of people emit a certain energy. And I think because of that energy, they are attractive to um, wayward entities or just passing entities. Um, and they want to play. They want to play. And uh, I think that's what was going on there. So anyway, what else do we want to talk about? On the previous show, we had talked about uh, seeing UFOs and whatnot. And um, we always are talking about that. And I was saying how, you know, it's important that we we do get the scientific method. You know, people are not just going to take somebody else's word for it because they've seen it or, or photographed or whatever. There has to be, uh, things have to be done right in order for people to, um, you know, have uh, understanding of other worlds. And it's just interesting to me because they have the scientific community, somebody in the scientific community came out with the number in our our universe alone that there could be maybe as many as 36 uh, civil civilizations advanced civilizations um, out of all the billions of things that are out there uh, mathematically speaking there could be at least that many and the reason that they are looking at that is they think some might be trying to contact us a but b if they have survived and didn't destroy their self, then maybe we can find out, you know, what we can do so that we don't destroy ourself, as obviously we're trying to do with all the weapons, weaponry and whatnot that we have, you know, on this in this world. And then I thought it was kind of interesting that uh, Japan, a bunch of people in Japan, filmed a looks like a balloon, a white balloon, but it's evidently really huge. Um, and maybe there's something that it's dragging, not sure. Um, but anyway, that's a new kind of UFO that evidently is out there now. And it was funny because I read that right after seeing something on another venue. And it was about um, the same thing, the same kind, you know, just like solid, round, white. And um, so I think there's been a few of those coming up lately. And so basically that's all we had talked about that I can recall at the moment because mostly we were just carrying on at all the noise and whatnot that was taking place on the one we tried to do. And of course she had to leave uh, and hopefully she'll watch us later. But when I listened to it, that was the craziest sound I ever heard. It did sound like a helicopter in the same room with us. It was crazy. So anyway, if anybody else wants to ask me something, I'll be happy to um, talk about it if it's as long as it's nothing um, that's going to be upsetting to anybody, because I'm not doing that. But uh, if anybody's got anything they want to ask me, 
Um, I'm looking at some of your comments now. And, uh, yeah, she was saying there that um, these entities are drawn to her, and that's what I was just talking about. But, you know, there are a lot of people that um, would love to have a paranormal experience, and there's other people that would love not to have. <laughs> it just seems to be that way. Oh, thank you, Angela. Uh, that's another thing I just forgot that we did talk about that I was trying to recap. Uh, she's saying that she just saw a video of a swarm of crows and ravens, someone filmed like album movie. I had... Oddly enough, I just started thinking we need to watch the birds. I don't know why I said that or why I thought that, but I did. But then some people, uh, PJ Sinton and now Angela and someone else, I think maybe volunteered that they had been seeing these videos of these swarms of crows acting all crazy. And uh, somebody else was making a comment about uh, a birds doing some weird things. But I don't know why I was saying watch the birds, but I am saying it. So I think the birds are going to be a harbinger maybe of change to maybe get our attention. Hey, stuff is happening. Uh, pay attention because something's going on out there and the birds are going to be maybe the early messengers of that. You know, crows have always been thought to be very magical animals uh, that go between uh, realms. Um, they thought to bring messages from the other worlds and whatnot. So, you know, sometimes, you know, a swarm is just a swarm. <laughs> but sometimes maybe it's... Uh, saying hey pay attention there are messages coming through uh maybe you will hear them in your back of your mind or maybe you will feel them in your heart uh, maybe you will just find yourself being where you need to be even though you don't even know how that happened because you were paying attention to the signs that were sent which is you know stuff is coming and uh take care of your business so that you can do whatever you need to do whenever you need to do it I'm just saying that maybe the way I'm looking at it, you can look at it whatever way, you know, that you think you need to look at it. See, this is where I really miss old Kim, which is here right now, because she could come up with the next subject here for us. So anybody else got anything they want to talk about or ask about, let me know. I hope y'all can hear me okay. Um, I hope you can see me okay. I just realized I do have this air conditioner on over my head here. So, okay, I guess I'm not really seeing anything else coming up. So, I'm terribly sorry again about all the uh, technical difficulties. Oh, my goodness. Birds have been bumping into Angela's bedroom window, even when the blind is down. That's kind of, uh, you know, maybe the universe trying to really hard to get your attention. It says, you know, maybe pay attention. Something might be going on there you need to, to know about. So, anyway... Um, if anybody's got anything they want to ask me, it's now or never because I'm about out of here. Oh, I think I had also said the energy is going to, it's never going to actually go away, Blanca. She's asking when's the COVID going away. It's never going to go away, probably. We're going to end up maybe having a, a vaccine for, for it. It may recede and then come back, but uh, it's probably not going to go away. And uh, PJ Sitton, I'm glad. Thank you for finally talking now. Is saying that he feels like the, uh, the aliens are going to show themselves soon, and I think that's probably um, correct. I think that probably they're trying to let us know that that's going to happen, and maybe people are not uh, wanting to hear that. So maybe uh, they're going to find out whether they want to hear it or not. And, um, hey, Jeanette, I'm so glad there's some more people coming on now. I was just getting ready to, to hang up. Um, because I don't want to be wasting y'all's time, but if you are, if you're seeing anything you want to ask me while you got me on here about things that might be of interest to others, you know, you better ask me now, because I think I've run out of stuff to say. Um, in case for those of you who just checked in late, or for those of you who may be watching later and wondering where Kim is, Kim and I tried to do a show earlier, but we had so many technical difficulties that she left in a huff that she just left. She she was only mildly in the hub. She's probably watching this later thinking, I wasn't in a hub. But um, it it was just highly aggravating, and there was the weirdest sounds coming through. I don't even know what was going on in there. I do not even know. So I'm just using my phone. And, yeah, um, sometimes, you know, it is does take a threat, as Reagan had said, from an outside force to make humans, you know, 
bond together to, as we would do uh, if we were feeling threatened by a source that was non-human. Although, of course, there may not actually be a threat. You don't know. But, you know, people, you know, I think it's sad that it would take that kind of thing to, uh, to make us lean on one another. And again, I appreciate very much y'all uh, tuning in. Is there anything anybody else would like for me to talk about before I go? Yeah, I think that uh, the world chaos, uh, that's very good. Maybe waking up unknown beings from other realms. Now, that's interesting. I think that uh, it's like maybe when you do drop uh, like a rock, you might say, in the water, it makes a splash and causes things to happen, a ripple effect. So maybe there is a ripple going both ways. Maybe there are things happening in other other realms that are causing a uh, reverberation here and maybe stuff happening here will cause a reverberation there. And uh, Gail, just message me or text me or call me. Go to my website, AngelaFayMoore.com uh, if you want to find my info about how to schedule an appointment. Thank you. Now, Jeanette, that's not a strange question. Now, uh, most of the, uh, I think the uh, Buddhist people and whatnot believe that, you know, you, you incarnate as an animal and you go to higher levels as you go. You start out maybe low and then you, you graduate to a, a more sentient being. But I think a lot of the Native Americans, and this is my, my belief, uh, humans have a human spirit, only human spirit. And then animals have shared spirits, like there's the buffalo, spirit of the buffalo, spirit of the eagle, spirit of the, of the, um, the dog, you know, whatever. And those spirits, those animals can actually serve us as um, gods. Um, and like, for example, if you are a meat eater, you know, and not only do you, should you thank maybe your creator, if you believe in your creator, maybe thank the spirit of the animal that provided that food for you too. Um, so you thank that spirit as well okay but um some people believe one way and some believe another and some of course don't believe anything at all but in general yeah it is a um my belief is human spirits reincarnate as human and then having said that i think there's probably exceptions i do think there are exceptions and i've met uh, a couple of people i honestly think that were in fact maybe not I saw like this wolf kind of being in a person before, and um, I think I saw maybe a bird-like creature in a person before. And um, I think maybe, you know, human spirits, having said that, maybe otherworldly kind of beings that may be somewhat compatible with this. I have seen other words, uh, I want to say alien to us beings incarnated in human form. And I think that sometimes it's not the best fit um, to have an alien spirit in a human body. I think sometimes it's a little bit of a, of a weird fit. Um, those people usually will tell you they don't feel fully human. But anyway, that might be more information on what you were asking for, uh, Jeanette, but that's the best way I can tell you. Um, a lot of people, I think my husband, I think my husband, A, PJ, is from another realm but I also think that um, I had a friend, actually she passed away, but she used to swear, she said, James, it's not from this time. I'm telling you, he's maybe from 100 years ago or something, but he's not from this time. And I think that we're both right. I think maybe he uh, is from a different time and maybe from a different place as well. Maybe not at the same time. So yeah, I think that, I think that we maybe incarnate um, after, I think we first maybe incarnate in a timeline that is straight, but then I think we might bounce around. Um, I do not think I saw the video of the elf light being. Maybe I did. I may have seen it. Um, if it was Blanca's asking if I saw a video of an elf light being, um, I don't know that I saw that, but I did see one somewhere, and I just don't have any comment except to say, well, you know, if she seen it, I saw it. I just don't recall it at the minute. Um, but I do think that sometimes there are those beings and there are absolutely elf light -like beings in this town. I have told y'all stories before of other people, not me, but people that I know and trust and uh, actually are good solid citizen people who have seen beings. Um, they say that 
red hats. They've been seen with little red hats. I'm not making this up, but in my case, there was actually some beings around that other people saw I didn't, but it was in a former house um, that had red shoes. I don't know what the deal is. I'm just saying this is what people said in the scene. I've seen somebody that said they woke up and saw a little green person at the foot of their bed. And uh, this was not a flaky drug addict person. This was a middle-aged to older uh, lady who, you know, would not just tell anybody something like that. I saw another person who saw a little uh, being, not everything is really close to here where I am, who saw one. And then years later, her daughter saw exactly the same thing in exactly the same place. And the daughter never knew a thing about the mother ever seeing that. So I do think that there are otherworldly beings. And I've told you before about... Um, I don't think my friend will mind me telling about a, a relative of theirs uh, had um, seen, excuse me, I'm trying to get comfortable here, my phone gets heavy, um, some beings in a mine, you know, and I've had actually somebody else do that too, so more than one person has told me about seeing, like in a coal mine, you know, seeing things that uh, were living there. Um, do people who are sick and dying have spirits come to them and let them know that it's time and why they reach out to there? Oh, that's so odd. Um, too bad Kim's not here to tell you, but that's what I believe she said that her mom had done. And oddly enough, I was dreaming about that the other night. I was dreaming about somebody who was watching somebody. And that's what they were doing. I think I get around in my dreams. But anyway... I think that there are those that help us to cross over, and I think that's their job, you know. And most people will actually see, uh, from my understanding, people that work in this field see their moms if their moms have gone on. But if not, they will see other, you know, comforting spirits, um, and I'm sure there's exceptions to that. And I think they're reaching out for those people to help them, to help pull them right on out of this mortal coil and on into the next realm. And I just hope. And pray that, you know, there's going to come a time when it's my time that I'm going to open my eyes and see my papa and my loved ones. And I can't, what a joyful day that will be, right? If that happens, so. Okay, let's see what else we got on here. Yeah, I, I did see that, Shannon. I did see it, uh, Blanca, the Dobby on Harry Potter. Yes, I did see that. Um, and that was just crazy weird. And honestly... I think I dreamed about that last night, too. I think I must have dreamed this day already. Well, I don't think you're crazy at all, Jeanette. I think it's very possible that maybe one of your dogs is harboring a spirit that is a higher-level spirit. You know, I've seen stuff in, like, domestic animals. I think they're just, I don't think they have a shared spirit. I think wild animals do, like I was saying earlier. But I, I think that dogs and, um, you know, our personal helper animals. I think they are very individual beings. I do. And I do think that they come back too. I think my little uh, Susie may be uh, my daughter's previous little uh, dog nugget. I really do because she's doing weird things like she did. Okay. See that old lady at my... Oh! Okay. Shannon uh, Blanca just was talking about I had done this event in town and this lady girl and I don't know what it was but I felt afraid of her <laughs> it was like I just got afraid of her and she was like at a distance she was like young and then when she got up and came up to talk to me she was old and I, I felt I, I never felt like that before I don't think about a person I just got afraid not that she was going to kill me or nothing but um that there was just something really wrong and she, and I asked her who she was or something. She says, well, you know who I am. I, I did know who she was, but I knew she wasn't, it wasn't right at all. And I forgot what else was even said between us. I mean, I kept my cool, kept my cool, people. You'd have been proud, <laughs> proud of me because I kept my cool, but I didn't feel cool. I felt panicked inside. I thought, this, this, this is not a human person. This is not a human person. Anyway, then she left, and as she started leaving, I said something about, you know, something I picked up on her, like, before as she was leaving. And all of a sudden, she was back to being like a regular human being again, and the, whatever that was, I wasn't feeling no more. Now, I will tell you, I felt that with one other person, and you know what? I forgot about this. I have a relative and wonderful person, and we had uh, were in her car one time, 
And I don't know what happened. And she'd tell you this if I was telling you she is, but I'm not. <laughs> but she had this weird energy. And I felt afraid of her. And this is somebody that loves me, okay? So there's no reason to feel that way. But I did. I forgot about that. And then anyway, we turned around the car and come on. And then she said, what was that? Because she had suddenly felt an energy that made her feel like she wanted to do something terrible. So I don't know what was happening. But there was, well, I'm going to tell you what was happening. This just in. There was some sort of crazy energy. Um, maybe a, a violent energy. But again, I don't think it was human energy that was sitting in that car that was affecting us in a very, very, very unsettling way. But it came and it went, you know. Okay, let's see. PJ, my grandfather swore up and down. There were little people in these mountains. He swore it till he died. I'm, I'm right there with him, PJ. Reptilians. Um, there are absolutely beings that I think are called reptilians. And um, some people say they can see like a third eyelid or they can see a tail. I have actually seen that tail on people. Not all of them are bad. We all automatically think, oh my God, reptilians bad, but they're not all bad. However, as a group, they may not always have the best, um, excuse me, the best uh, intention. Okay, let's see what else we got here now. Man, I was getting ready to hang up. I'm glad you, whoopsie. I'm glad you all, I about lost you there. I'm glad y'all showed up after all, because, um, Well, I think some little people are some good and some evil. I would agree with that. That uh, maybe that's how it is in all beings of, in, you know, higher intelligence. That maybe that uh, there's a choice to be made whether you're going to follow a path of, of good and light and helpfulness and community or you're going to, you know, shuck it all and go for your own personal, not always good thing. They can be go for your own way and not be bad too, but you know what I'm saying. Well, maybe you're changing your picture, uh, PJ. There on your site, he just said they were changing, changing a picture to uh, uh, grandparents there, and don't know why. But maybe there is a reason that sometimes we feel a need to change our image, whether it's to somebody else's image or whatever, because maybe we're feeling the energy of those folks and this is how we want to honor it because maybe they're visiting or maybe we want to change it to a different view of ourselves because we're changing within ourselves, and the, the look that we had one day is not reflective of the look we have another one. Okay, anybody else got anything they want to talk about? Hey, yeah, it's been a long time, Tony. And... Okay. Um, oh my gosh, Blanc Shannon, Shannon, you're going to have to write a book for me about the things that have happened that you know about. She knows more about me than I know about me. She's talking about the night, uh, the day the Native Americans came to my house. And I don't know if I've ever told you that or not, but I'm not going to go into the detail because it's a too long of a story. But yeah, that happened where it's three Native American people came to my house and stayed there for an entire session and it turns out nobody saw them but me <laughs> it's like i don't even know what that's about anyway um there is crazy in the energy in the world and uh i don't know that change is always a good thing i think ev evolutionary change is obviously a good thing when you're you know evolving to a higher level where you're going to have more peace and understanding but human beings you know I think that there is something evil in the world, but it has always been in the world. What is different, Kay, who is asking if something evil is causing evil, it's like we have to open the door to that, okay? And think of it like, you know, it's just like when we're on a way train. The more you empower it, the stronger and more powerful it gets. But, you know, Billy Graham actually used to say, anytime you have a rise in evil, you'll have a rise in good. So I think it'll balance out eventually, okay? It will balance out, but you got to... Yeah, I mean, I think that there, I've said, I have said for how long now that I think that there was an extra dose of evilness, let's just say, dumped into this world probably about uh, 60, 50, 
I don't know. There's always been evil in the world. Look at the Crusades, for crying out loud. But I feel like there has been like an extra dose of evil maybe about 50, 60 years ago. I do. And I think the primary uh, job of this was to tear down uh, the human race. And what do you do if you want to tear down the human race? You tear down the family. That's, you, that's your core right there. And so we made the family not important. You know, we get like a, a new labor flooding the market and everything. So make people feel bad about who they are. And, you know, all of a sudden divorce is just nothing, nothing. Um, in other words, you tear down the core of society. You tear that down and then you tore down your society, basically. And then you're vulnerable to societies that might like to take over and, and use your labor and use your uh, uh, energy for whatever they want to use it for. So, yeah, I think there's absolutely been an ulterior motive that has come from human beings, but human beings who allowed maybe um, something that is beyond human beings to come in and infiltrate, that's what I'm looking for, and exploit our human weaknesses uh, for their own purpose. Okay, that's the way I see it, but you might not see it that way. Thank you, Vanessa. I know you're too sweet, and I, I want to love you all back, too. <laughs> hey, Michelle, I'm always afraid I'm going to offend somebody. I'm not sure anybody wants to act, let other people know they know me. Um, no, that's funny. Blanca says, I, I saw the tall, giant Native American, but others, not others, what do you mean you saw? She Okay, now she's telling me after all these years that she saw the tall one. So that just freaks me out because nobody told me you saw that all this time. Uh, yeah, about the... It's a long story. I will. I might just do a totally... I might just do a video about that story, Michelle, since you don't mind me using your name. And since Blanca, out of the blue, you suddenly are telling me after all these years that you saw... The tall one. Okay, these people come to my house. I don't know. I'll tell y'all about it in a different vlog later. Okay, T thank you, PJ. That's what I'm saying. Um, it's okay, I think, to rewrite maybe the way we do things in the world. You know, we are. We should evolve, but you got to be careful when you tear down something. You got to be real careful that you got <laughs> the means to put it back together in a way that's even better. Okay. Of course, Shannon may not be talking about the same thing. I'll have to, I'll have to find out what the heck she's talking about there. She may not be talking about the same thing we're talking about, Michelle. Um, she's she's saying that Native Americans are stepping up doing rituals for chaos. Yeah, I think that's great. That I think we all need to do that. I think we all need to tap into whatever belief system, uh, whether it's a traditional just having prayer meeting, uh, which we all need to have it for me. I think. Or whether it's, you know, alternative or whatever, you know, and the the native rituals and whatnot, uh, whatever is speaking to you, I think anything we can do to bring help bring peace. And I tell you, the best way to do it is to treat others kindly, to treat other people in a way that you would hope other people might treat you. If you do that, you might do a whole lot of good, you know. So why don't we just try that? Let's just maybe treat people the way we might like to be treated. Um, Are you live? I am live, and if you don't think I'll turn this phone around, you're wrong, and I will. You better not. My kid, the boy, just came in here buck naked out of the shower and stood there like that's an okay thing to do because that's the way he rolls. That kid, he, that kid anything to get my attention i'm going to turn this phone around if you come in here i promise i don't care i will do it yeah Gigi does okay i love him okay uh do i think there's native american energy around montford cove fort Val yeah oh, heck yeah all around these mountains this is where they lived of course there are and you, as you know they did curse uh, Old Fort. That's what they say, and I believe that to be true. Uh, we talked about that on previous Metaphysical Matters, I believe, where they actually did, in fact, absolutely um, 
curse that everybody that was a leader of the fort would die of early or something, and they did. So, anyway. Anybody? Okay, let's see what else we got here. Uh, people that would take over the museum or something like that. I forgot. You have to forgive me. Kim was here. She would tell you exactly who it is. But, in fact, you know, everybody was dying early of a heart attack that was running stuff down there um, that would, you know, be the equivalent of whatever was there then. But that last guy, I think, had a heart attack, but he survived it. So maybe that broke the alleged curse. I will tell him you said, <laughs> said, hey, Elizabeth. Um, some people said, hey, Dylan. Um, okay. Anybody else got anything they want to, um, anything else they want to ask me? Now or never, because I'm getting ready to go. Oh, yeah, I've been to the Carson house many times, Elizabeth. Uh, it's very uh, interesting for its history, but it is also very haunted. And the lady that was the uh, person who ran things there actually wrote a book about it, and I'd love to tell you the name of it, but I don't know it. But I'm guessing you could google it and find out but there are a lot of stories and actually had a haunted um thing here around halloween tour of the place so it's known to be and i mean they actually took you on the tour and talked about all the things that had happened and gone on there um uh, it's very very intriguing uh debbie said how do i open myself up to be able to talk to a spirit in my house okay First of all, don't be opening yourself up. Just don't do that. But you can maybe just talk, surround yourself maybe in light, maybe sage to make sure it's calm. Ask your angels to be with you. And then maybe just talk the way you talk to somebody that was standing there. Don't make a big deal out of it. Just talk out loud. But I'm going to tell you the truth. You might be inviting trouble by, by even acknowledging because you don't know who that is. Um, now, I talk to, like, for example, my papa or my Aunt Ruby or my mom or whatever all the time. Um, I do, and psychologists, I believe, have said that's a good thing to do because it helps you. But I believe that they help us in spirit, and I think they're at a higher level, and I do think they help and hear us. But sometimes, you know, I have a spirit in here. I just posted the other day about somebody I could hear, you know. My, we've had them on the phone and everything else in this house. Well, it's everywhere I go. So, yes, there are beings that uh, are a little bit lower than that. And sometimes when you... Uh, take their invitation to to communicate it don't turn out so well because it's like a bad house guest that don't want to leave you know they may take your invitation uh, to communicate as let's play and then you can get in all kinds of stuff going on um, sometimes you might want to just say you might want to um, you have to actually tell them like you're too close you need to back up or you know um, whatever once in a while, I will say to mine, you know, I do hear you. I know you're there. And that's okay. Just, you know, keep your space. Because I'm, I don't want to be like Shannon, have him jerking me by my foot, trying to get me out of my bed at night, you know. You've got to be careful about what you invite to your home. Some people have a gift of discernment. They can tell whether something's this way or that way. Um, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. But it's a gift, and not all people have it. So you use caution. But if you're heck bent on it, just talk to them the way you talk to me. Just talk. But again, you might want to make sure your house is kind of clean before you do. Hey, Jeanette and Debbie and everybody, Brandy. Um, I'm not sure if i got anything else interesting to say. I believe some of y'all might be uh, bored of me now. So, uh, again, I appreciate so very much. Uh, that you, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just reading some of your comments. I thank you so very much that you uh, actually jumped in here with me. And um, hopefully Kim will be back and we can do this uh, better next time around as we'd like to do. Um, but I guess this is it for now, folks. And thank you so very much for tuning in and helping me. Okay. And um, is that it now? I just want to make sure. Okay. I don't see anybody else talking. So bye.